This is what I think of the Easter Bunny. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and welcome back to AEL. And if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks very much. Today, I've got a bit of an experimentation video here. We're going to look at the LM386N amplifier IC, which I've done a few videos on before. And in this case, I'm doing an LM386 stereo bridge amplifier. Amplifier. Just let that sink in for a second. Uh, amplifier circuit and up here we can see a typical configuration for the LM386 got the input coming into the non-inverting input going out through a 470 microfarad 16 volt cap to the speaker on this side however we've got an inverting input now this can be used like a normal op amp you can use either of these inputs and ground the other one that's not in use uh, but you don't provide any negative feedback to it because it already has internal negative feedback inside the IC. So this amplifier is going to invert the, in this case, the right hand input. So we're going to see an out of phase signal at the speaker here. And the thing is here, we've got another LM386 that so uses three in total, which is acting as the bridge adapter for want of a better term. So this is going to take an inverted signal from the left hand side to provide the negative going signal to the left hand speaker at the same time it's going to take uh, the right hand input on the non-inverting input and provide a normal in phase signal to this side of the speaker so from what I can see the positive one speaker should go to this amplifier and the negative of this speaker should go to this amplifier otherwise it'll be out of phase and the positive of this speaker goes to this point and the negative of this speaker goes to that point and I'll link in the description the site where this came from and uh, you can play with it to your heart's content I'm going to build this up on a piece of breadboard and test it uh, and see how well it performs the only thing is this particular IC is going to be doing twice as much work as these two ICs so they're going to get quite hot at uh, fairly high output powers now according to the text each of these amplifiers should now be able to produce one watt into their load an 8 ohm speaker so that'll be something to be tested because the in general at a 9 volt power supply these are barely able to produce 500 milliwatts so it'll be something to uh, look at on the oscilloscope Anyway, let's build this up on a piece of breadboard and uh, see how well it works. And just one other thing before we do that is I've just noticed on his PCB that he's made, because there's a copper foil layout up there, he's actually wired both negatives together to the center amplifier point, which doesn't seem right to me, That because that would mean that when this speaker is in phase, this speaker is going to be out of phase. So, hmm, all right, so we'll have to have a look at it on the scope and see if there is an inversion shift between the two outputs, and I reckon there's going to be. So let's get it built up on breadboard and see what it does. Shut up and sit down, you big balls. Okay, so I've got each of the channels built. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to paint it or build it to scale. Um, so this IC here is going to be our left channel. That's the bridging adapter IC and this one is the right hand channel so what I have to do is I have to hook up the dummy load and power supply etc I'm going to start by testing the left hand channel then I'll test the right hand channel and then I'll drive both at the same time so let me get set up with some test equipment and the power supply and we'll see if this circuit works now I've got a 470 microfarad 63 volt capacitor here as bulk filtering and a little LED here just to indicate that the circuit is operational. All right, let's get going. Got everything set up, the generator and the power supply, oscilloscope, dummy load, etc. 
Now at no point can the oscillator's ground be connected to the oscilloscope's ground or else you won't get any output and there is a possibility of running the risk of destroying one of the ICs. Remember this is a bridged amplifier, not a normal amplifier. So we have an output, so it's fairly clean, getting about 1 volt RMS. No we're not, that's the kilohertz. 324 millivolt RMS, I wind it up. I'm out of scale. So I'll drop that down and line it up till it clips. I'm still way out on my volts per division. There it is there. The LM386 does clip rather weirdly. But anyway, drop that down till the clipping goes away. I'm going to say it's about there. We've got 3.13 volt RMS before clipping, which is not too shabby from an LM386 to be honest. So I'll just turn that down so that chip's not getting overly hot. So that's about 1.2 watts RMS into 8 ohms. And that's at a power supply of about 9.2 volt, which is not too bad. So I need to switch over to the second channel. I'm not going to bother measuring the um, output of this channel here, because that's our bridging adapter, which is where the ground connection currently is connected. So I'll go over to the right hand output, I'll move the signal gen's input over to the other side and totally miss, there we go, start winding the input up. Now we have an output but immediately we can see that the waveform doesn't look quite synchronoidal. Now if I increase our time base per division there, we can see it's a rather jagged sort of waveform. It's got, looks like what's experiencing a little bit of crossover distortion here and here and clipping a little bit early on the positive going peak, but that's not at its full power. Uh, yeah, well, we can see now it's starting to clip symmetrically so we know we've reached the maximum. So the maximum output would actually be about there. But it's only 2.78 volt RMS. It's about 400 millivolts less. Mm. So far it doesn't look like this is a very good solution or very practical. But I'll just calculate what that power is. 966 milliwatts. We're about 300 milliwatts short. Well, 200 milliwatts short. Hmm. It's gonna sound fairly imbalanced. Okay, so I'm just gonna kill the power for a second. I'm gonna reconfigure the circuit so that we've got a load on each side with this amplifier center point here being the common point to both. And I wanna see if there's a phase shift between the two signals. So I'll just grab a couple of extra jumper leads here and get that set up. All right, circuit is reconfigured and I've got both channels now driving the load and two oscilloscope channels. And just as I thought the way he's got it configured in his drawing for the circuit board, the two signals are inverted with each other. So that is gonna have a severe lack of bass. So you cannot, you cannot drive both channels um, in that configuration, I'd have to swap the output leads around on the, well, the blue trace, which is the right-hand channel. The yellow one's the first channel, the left channel. So, just as I thought, they're backwards. But anyway, the circuit is working. However, it's not very practical. And that middle IC is starting to get fairly warm. Um, I don't know whether I want to actually hook this up to speakers. I guess it wouldn't be a complete test without doing that. All right, the speakers are hooked up and let's turn the oscillator up. We do have sound coming out of both, but it's hard to tell with whether one's out of phase or not with the other. I need to change my frequency down to something lower. Now I'm using slightly different capacitors than the original. I'm using 100 microfarads on the outputs because I don't have enough 470s. 
I'm going to stick this to 440 and we'll see how that works out. Well, I can't hear any bass shifting issues. Okay, so I suppose I should hook up a music source and see what it sounds like. It does sound better when that's connected out of phase, like the wiring's reversed. It does actually work. Is it practical? No. Um, if you want more power out of like a single IC like that, just use a different IC. At the same voltage, I mean. Um, you can get up to a 12 volt, uh, 12 watt amplifier at 12 volts. So, what's the point of doing this? Experimentation and fun. Otherwise, I wouldn't have any content. <laughs> anyway, I've tested it. My thoughts on it are, yeah, it works, but it's. Uh, not really practical but yeah it is what it is the speakers themselves they sound fine when you reverse the connection positive and negative around on the right hand speaker because it sounds kind of kind of like you know central when you've got this connected in phase with that speaker it just it does have a phasing issue there you can hear it but when you connect it to the reverse polarity on the speaker there, it actually sounds you know, better, I suppose. It's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, it definitely needs to be, that speaker definitely needs to be out of phase with this one. Anyhow, I'm gonna leave this video here because, well, there's not much more I can do with it. 
So if you enjoyed it, please remember to go down below, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, this is the Astro Theory saying, see ya, have a great day, I'll see you in the next video. And I hope you all had a good Easter. I know I did. And one final little piece of advice, if you do a lot of testing in times 1 with your probes, always switch them to times 10 when you go to put them away. Just in case you connect it up to something that's a little bit higher than 50 volts DC or whatever, so you don't blow up your oscilloscope. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.